What's up guys, Brandon here from Gearist. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Raven Boost from Adidas. Sometimes with trail shoes we find that they fall into the trap of being a little bit too beefy for their own good when it comes to comfort. They sacrifice that cushion and things that other people might want to feel for having that really, really rugged terrain kind of bent to them, ready to take on whatever's thrown at them. But with this shoe, the Raven Boost right here, I found it to walk a really nice line between those things, but did it in fact work? Let's check it out. Back in 2015, a scant three months ago, almost four months ago now, we took a look at the Terex Boost from Adidas also. You can take a look at that by clicking this link right here. Now, in that shoe, one of the things, one of the biggest takeaways for me was the amazing traction of the rubber that it was used in the outsole, and that was continental rubber. And today we find that exact same rubber used in this shoe. Apart from just the material grip of that rubber, this is actually inspired by continental trail King mountain bike tires. You can see that here. And here is actually a picture of the side-by-side -side of this track versus the traction on the Trail King tire itself. In addition to that, they've used Adawear technology in high abrasion areas to give you even more longevity for the life of the shoe. All this is arranged in this set of 67 four millimeter deep lugs ready to go wherever you might want to take them. My experience in this once again is that the, the rubber of this is just amazing. And in fact, only one or two, probably one one other thing that I can think of even comes close to matching just strictly the material grip of this rubber. So this is really a big plus for this shoe. Now right before doing the written review for this shoe right here, I was doing the circumnavigation of Button Rock, for which a video will be coming very soon, so definitely check that out. And on that run, run, hike, scramble thing, I got to rock faces of about 40 to 50 percent gradient. and. On those, they were lichen covered and leaves and loose grass and things like this, and this did a fantastic job. I mean, it just sticks to the rock. It's really and truly amazing. Unlike the Terex Boost, again, there will be a video of that coming very soon, these lugs are much more angular. They're, they're more spread out. They are more, as you saw a second ago, kind of reminiscent of that Trail King mountain bike tire, and they handle things as such. From a durability perspective, while we usually put about 40 miles on a shoe, this guy right here has quite a bit. It, and it has held up very, very well. I mean, it has been on some gnarly stuff. I'm not sure how well you can see that there, but the lugs have held up very well. It's been on all dirt, all paths. It has been on no roads to speak of, except for a dirt road leading up to a trail at Button Rock. Um, but it's just handled very well. The durability is excellent of the outsole of this shoe. Moving into the midsole of the Raven Boost, as the name would indicate, there is indeed Boost foam in this guy. And in this iteration, it shows up as a full length piece of Boost foam. Now, what it looks like, I'm going to hold it a little close to the camera so I may be out of focus. This looks like Boost foam back here. But then we get to this green piece, this EVA up here that looks like it's EVA. But what that actually is, is a bit of an EVA cradle to allow the, the foam not to have to flare so wide. As you can see here in the rear foot, that boost foam has to flare quite a bit beyond the actual profile of the shoe. Well, they didn't want to have such a wide shoe out front, so what they did in order to add some material stability, not stability as in a stability or motion controlled shoe, but just stability to the material itself, was to basically frame it by this cradle here. And that's one of those things that you have to realize about TPU foams like Boost Foam or like Everrun, which Saucony has started to use, is that while they're really resilient and bouncy and all that kind of stuff, which is awesome, they are also a little bit unstable from time to time. So you have to account for that by other structural elements in the shoe, and that is part of what this is. Additionally, when I was on that circumnavigation button rock that I mentioned earlier, I was on a lot of off-camber. And when I say off-camber on this, I mean like stupid off camber so where my foot was like this for like half hour hour at a time and what i found in that case is that it fine it handles fine if you account for that with your body and, I, and again i can't really assign the blame of kind of the annoyance of that situation to the shoe and certainly not to the material it's just when you wind up over 30 percent gradient um off camber gradient it, it becomes a bit of a pain in the butt but on any kind of off camber terrain and this is not exclusive to this shoe, but you should really be aware of where your body lies in that and using your entire body to balance out the, the stability or the traction that you want to get out of 
any particular shoe. As someone who's a solidly midfoot, forefoot runner, I really, really liked the bounce and the feel of this shoe. And again, I had this on my feet for that button rock thing was close to a five hour, even though it was only 10 miles because I was breaking new terrain, uh, a five hour thing on my feet and it felt very, very comfortable the entire time, even with wet feet. I also noticed that there's no break in period for me on this shoe at all. And I felt like this cradle here did a nice job of really making me feel very secure in what I was doing, keeping that landing pad area up here in the midfoot where I really personally land. And for my spec head friends in the crowd, this shoe has a 34 millimeter stack in the rear foot and a 24 millimeter stack in the forefoot for a net drop of 10 millimeters, higher than I generally like, and I would like to see this come a little bit lower. However, I will say that again, being that this is a trail shoe, as I've said about a lot of trail shoes, it's not as noticeable on a trail shoe as it might be on a road shoe. And as I mentioned before, this is comfortable enough and performed well enough, and I'll talk more about that in the ride section, that usually while we only put about 40 miles on a general pair of shoes, I put about 60 miles on this shoe, and the entire time it maintained its comfort. Move Moving into the upper of this guy, the first thing that we notice is that this is made of a dual layer mesh. That is the mesh that's up here. The first you can see is wide-ish open there, and it's underlaid by a layer that is more fine. That's not going to let those fine pieces of debris through. As for the support structure, it actually kind of goes away from what has been the trend recently of bonded or welded or 3D printed on overlays. And in this case, you've got synthetic overlays that appear to be kind of both. So there is some bonding up here and then back here, but it's also stitched on. Now, again, as I mentioned a second ago in the midsole portion of this review, I talked about being super off camber for long periods of time. And in those cases, my God, was it uncomfortable. I mean, my foot was pushed over to the side. I'm not blaming the shoe for that. I'm just saying that being on an off camber of that much, like this much for like an hour is a pain in the ass. My point in telling you that and pointing that out is that this structure held up like a dream. There is not a single pick, pull, or anything like that on the support structure of this guy. It is held strong and is truly, truly impressive. The first piece that I'll point out is this big sweeping piece that starts here and goes all the way around the back of the shoe and then up here again onto the medial side of the laces. That is a piece of what appears to be synthetic ripstop material that is bonded as well as stitched onto the material of the upper, rest of the upper of the shoe. In the front of the shoe, the front third of the shoe, you'll notice that this gives way to a slightly different material. It's hard to tell on video, but it gives way to a slightly rubberized material which again is both bonded and stitched on. It's a little more lightweight and it's not going to be as, you know, as hardcore as this part back here. But again, it's still held up like a dream for me. The tongue of this guy and the full gussets, the gussets stop right about there. So these gussets, they actually form a semi booty construction in the front half of the shoe, which is very comfortable. We've seen that as a trend of late. It's very, very comfortable in this. And again, keeps that foot nicely wrapped. And on that off camera stuff that I was mentioning, it really helps to keep you very much in contact with the shoe. The lace the system on the Raven Boost is actually a pretty standard speed lace system uh, in terms of the fastening. You can see it right here, this guy right here. There's a little lace garage up here under the tongue where everything tucks very nicely. You just slide it down. The eyelets, I actually think this is a really great idea. The eyelets sit up and over top. I'll kind of try to hold it there. So you can see how they sit up off of the material of the upper. And what is good about that is that it keeps the lace pressure going this way. It keeps the lace pressure going this way across the foot and basically wrapping the foot instead of having that kind of hammer down, that pulling down on the foot effect where, which is what might happen if they were a little lower down on the upper. Now I know I keep referring to that button rock run I did with these and uh, I'm going to refer to it again because the last one that I did right before writing the written review of this guy was that circumnavigation, which I don't think anyone has done in recent years, but I did it in this shoe and it held up extremely well. I beat the crap out of this thing. In fact, this this right here, you can see how it's kind of blackish. That is actually the same, usually the same bright orange color as this, but I was in such fine like peat and under brush material that was decayed and things like this that it got, and my foot was wet, that it got a little bit of staining on there. But again, I don't really blame the fabric for that. It's not a big deal to me. And I should also mention that apart from some of the most fine dust and things like this, this kept out everything until I got to that material, which was literally pouring in the top of the shoe where I had to take off the shoes a couple of times and kind of knock them out. But it did a great job keeping everything out. And I was impressed by that very much so. The amount of foam around the collar and the tongue was spot on. I I really like the amount. It's not too much, not too little. It feels very, very good, especially on long runs. And again, I'll mention that off-camber stuff, that way off-camber
camera stuff where I was like this for minutes at a time, this material held up like a dream. One thing that is a little bit odd, it's not it's not a deal breaker, it's not really a negative thing at all, but it's the tongue. You can see how high that thing sits up there. I mean, look at that. It sits up kind of high. I don't know why it didn't hurt my leg or anything like that. It wasn't annoying. It's just something that I thought I should point out. It sits up a little much, and that is where the laces go up under there. Now, before we get into the specifics of the fit of this shoe, let me mention that in my size 11s, I wore exactly where I would usually. I just wore size 11, and it fit just fine. I could maybe have gone up to a size 11 and a half if I really really wanted to but I felt like it may be too large but if you've got a foot that's on the edge you may feel more comfortable going up that half size and I'll explain why in a second now this shoe my size 11 right here I should also mention comes in at 11.9 ounces by our measurements that is what we weighted at on a postal scale that we have here in house that is very accurate Oddly, that 11.9 ounces is only 0.5 ounces heavier than what Adidas claims this weighs that they're in their size 9. The size 9 comes in at 11.5 ounces according to them, so this is only half ounce heavier for two sizes up. So that was very interesting. I don't know who's wrong there. Maybe it's me, I guess, but I don't really think so. Starting with the rear foot of this shoe, this little tab right here that comes up, you would think it might make it feel like it was a little bit taller than normal, but as as you can see, it kind of goes and angles itself away from the Achilles, so it didn't really affect me at all. The heel cup on this guy is great. I felt very comfortable in this, and the sock liner is actually shapes the cup a little bit, and what's really cool is that a bit of this midsole material does overlap, but just by like that much, like five millimeters or so, over into the heel cup, which really forms a nice shape in there. And again, as we're talking about that boost foam being a little bit wonky in certain cases, especially when it gets off camber, and this is not a knock on boost foam, it's just a TPU foam thing in general, this made me feel very much more secure and connected to the shoe. Now as we move into the midfoot and the forefoot, I gotta be honest with you, and right out of the box, this thing felt snug, like way snug. Now my solution to this, rather than go, what the hell is this, and get rid of it, and it's not gonna fit my foot, my solution to that was to completely loosen the laces. So I pulled them so that all the slack of the laces was basically spread even. And there's quite a bit of slack in this. And in fact, they actually even give you instructions for how to get rid of some of the excess lacing on here. But I loosened it up fully and just pulled the shoe apart and then put my foot in and it was perfectly fine. Now then I had to go back and kind of cinch the laces down to where I might want them. I will say that if you have a wider foot, if you're buying this shoe, you're taking a bit of a gamble. It's not that you can't get it, try it and see if it works for you, but just make sure that if you're buying it from a local run shop, you try it on there, go for a couple steps of a run. If you're buying it online, also no big deal, but just make sure that when you buy it, you can return it for free with the company that you bought it from. And by the way, we have definitely shopped around for this for you. If you check the buy links down in the description of this video. I think the fit of this is very comfortable. It could use, again, as with most shoes, I say a little bit more lateral room on the on the toe box there, but I was pretty comfortable. And again, I've had this on really long runs, up to pretty close to five hours with wet feet, and it was very comfortable. Yes, my feet weren't wet the whole time, but easily half the time. And I just really like the way it fits, and it's very comfortable to my foot. Again, if you've got a wider foot, you're taking a gamble, but try it on and you'll see. One other thing I should mention is that, as I mentioned, this on that button rock run got really wet. I had a water crossing. It drained very well for me, um, but it stays wet inside, like any shoe would. You get something wet, it's gonna stay wet. Uh, it wasn't a huge deal, but one thing that was awesome about it is that the upper didn't stretch out and kind of give out on me. Now, obviously part of that is that materials like these bonded and stitched on overlays here aren't really prone to stretching, but it just really maintained its shape excellently. If you've not tried Boost or any other TPU foam, you may not quite know what to expect. And in this, what I really like about it is that this cool juxtaposition of cushy and resilient. It gives you that bounce, it gives you that performance and response, but it's also cushioned for those that are looking for more cushioning. It gives the foot a comfortable platform on which to stand without just sinking and breaking down over time, which is a real added bonus to this type of material. On rockier terrain, I have to say that there is no rock plate in this guy at all, but uh, some of the material kind of accounted for a little bit. However, I do wish at times when I got on particularly sharp stuff that there was a bit of a rock plate. Not much, just a little very thin one because you're you're aware of the things underfoot. That said, there's good ground feel in this, which is also something that accounts for a good amount of just 
proprioception and, and stability of your body within the shoe. When I was on more smooth and buffed out trails, I was able to open up my stride in this and I really love running in this shoe a little more quickly with a more open stride. That bounce and that snap that you're getting from this material is awesome. And while there's not a lot of torsional rigidity, I mean, you can move this shoe around pretty easily. Um, it gives you that pop that is just really, really great, especially when you're just cruising down some well-groomed trails. This is a very comfortable ride that I can see a lot of people taking for very long runs. That, that button rock thing that I've referred to about a billion times now was about 10 and a half miles, but more importantly, it was very long. All totaled, it was about five hours. And of course, that included stops and me talking to the camera and filming and trying to figure out how to cross a river without getting wet, where I eventually got wet. Anyway, my point in telling you that is that the final two miles of that run were on a dirt road, the same dirt road that I had to come up on. And one of the great things that I found about this shoe relative to being on my feet that long and then getting onto a dirt road and having to run back to the car is that the shoe itself didn't feel saggy. I still felt that bounce. I still felt the same way it felt as I got out of the car to start the run. And that was a big, big bonus for me. As you may be able to tell by the fact that I put 60 miles on the shoe instead of our typical 40 for wear testing shoes, just because we don't have time to put much more than that on a lot of things. I really liked running in this shoe. There are definitely individual aspects of it that I really like. Some that I'm kind of like, eh, on the fence or whatever, could give it take it. But one of the biggest things for me is the collective way I felt about this shoe. And I feel like this is a good shoe that you can just put on and go out the door on a trail run. It's nice and solid. It can handle pretty much any type of trail. Yeah, it's missing a rock plate, but that's not a deal breaker for me. And believe me, I took it on trails where it could have used a rock plate, but it's still a shoe that did really, really well and just great out the door. The one thing that I will knock it for is that fit. It does need adjusting on your part, and I would like to see that addressed. I mean, it shouldn't feel quite that snug. I do think there's a lot of room for improvement with that, but I also think that for most people with average feet and below, you're gonna be perfectly comfortable in this. But it would be nice to have a little more room, kind of wiggle room in there to, to not have to mess with the fit so much. At $150, but just check the buy links down below because we found it for some cases closer to $100. At $150, it is not the cheapest thing in the world, but the bang for your buck is definitely there. A long haul shoe, a short haul shoe, a fast shoe, a climbing shoe, a scrambling shoe. It does a really good job. And I've actually had people ask me if they thought it would be good for even scrambling up things like the flat irons. And to be honest, I think it would. This rubber is spectacular. Overall, just a really solid shoe and I'm really glad I got my feet into it. And I will probably have it out more even though we've got a lot of shoes in the hopper. Now, before we get to the question of the day, please don't don't forget to like and favorite and guys please subscribe to our channel we are gonna push this year to subscribe all of you guys and hit a million views very very soon that would be such a huge present for us so thank you so much and now here's our question of the day and that is have you tried a shoe with TPU foam in it whether that's Saucony with their Everrun material or Adidas with their boost material and if you have tried it was it in a trail application or a road application let us know down in the comments section below as always guys thank you so much for spending a few minutes with us today if you've got any questions at all don't hesitate to email info at gearist.com or reach out to us on all of our social media outlets or just go to visit gearist.com and click that contact us link if you've got any questions you'd like to see on ask gearist feel free to ask them there or shoot us an email again at info gearist.com with the subject line of ask gearist and we'd be happy to record an ask gearist segment for you once again guys thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time